Hello everyone and welcome to round two of the Captain and Church Tournament, an exhibition for the new promos. Uh, this is the second round. So we're first playing with Captain here. If you don't remember, it's a Banda Misfits, Duration Banda Misfits. So you can mimic cards costing up to four from the supply that are not Duration cards. Those cards in the kingdom are Silk Merchant and the bottom five. So it has a lot of targets, six of the ten. Uh, so I expected to do a lot of work here. Now looking at the kingdom, we had a couple things to think about. There's ample villages. There are ample villages. There's also draw in Silk Merchant, Old Witch, Faithful Hound. And you have trashing in Salvager and Trading Post. A couple of extra points on Labyrinth, but I don't didn't think that would be super important because I expected the game to end very quickly on provinces once you use leprechaun to gain gold salvager to trash those gold maybe trash provinces to mill provinces out of the supply that's how i foresaw this game going but to get to that point you need to trash a bit and i think trading post is a better option for trashing than the salvager the trading post will get you some money which you need to buy captain with and it also will help you to get some of the labyrinth points so my plan for getting to the trading post was to go silk merchant and silver on the opening i see my opponent open trading post turn one which makes me think a bit as should i open with salvager i expect to be a bit behind on the trashing so maybe i want to get the salvager now to try to speed up my rate of trashing but i decide no the silver is better captain is a good card let me try to get uh, the trading post on the other shuffle and have a silver ready for captain hopefully soon and my opponent pairs the trading post with a faithful hound there which i didn't really like i feel like the hound would just cause trouble with the trading post they could collide or the hound could draw into the trading post I do get my trading post on turn 3 here. I spend my coffer from the Silk Merchant to get it. I think that's very important to get there. And you see here my opponent plays the Faithful Hound, uh, buys a village, Blessed Village, and gets the Sun's Gift to clear off the top of the deck. And look like the Hound drew the trading post dead, which is good for me, but not good for them, of course. Anyways, we get to 5 again here. Because they discarded all the cards from the Sun's Gift is why I thought... Either the trading post was at the bottom or they drew it off the Faithful Hound and they wanted to get back around to it as fast as possible by discarding all four cards from the Sun's Gift. Five again here, I thought about Young Witch, but I didn't think that was a good idea with just one villager. Treasury also crossed my mind to try to buy Captain, but I reasoned, look, I'm getting silvers from the trading post. I'll have money for it. I don't need the Treasury to do that. And I just went for Ports. Now the reason for ports over the Blessed Village, I'll explain uh, when I have some time. My opponent uh, trashes a couple estates here for a silver. The ports, one, are more villages, more sources of plus action than the one Blessed Village. I get two ports, which means there's a greater chance of appearing with the draw cards, as you see on your screen here. And also the ports also make it easier or well, not easier, but you get to trigger your Leprechaun more quickly. And I didn't really see any boon that was particularly helpful from the um, Blessed Village. The, the Dungeon one would be fine, but that's 1 in 11. The rest of them I don't really care for. And my opponent thinks for a while and goes for another Faithful Hound here, which I found a bit curious. They already have the one, which I thought was enough on the opening. And now they go for a second one. I just check to make sure I'm not missing anything with the Hound. I don't think I am. So we move on. We get to 6. And I think this is Captain. Has to be Captain. I consider the Old Witch at this point. Because I do have the couple of ports in. But I think the Captain is better. Again, I'm still thinking. Okay, he played. or My opponent played their trading post on turn 4. They're still a bit ahead on the trashing front. So that captain could be a salvage if I needed to be, or he could get me some draw. Uh, we'll see. So I decided to take the captain there as opposed to the old witch, just to try to build up the draw a bit. Four is going to be another silk merchant here. Again, just pushing for the draw. Could be 
another pair of ports, but I don't really need another pair of ports. Um, with this Silk Merchant, I have two Silk Merchants, two ports, and a trading post in the deck. The actions balance off quite nicely, and I have a captain floating, which can be a village if I need it to be. It could be something else if the situation is right. So my opponent draws a bit here and gets up to a captain of their own. So that is good news for them. We have a captain each. I get a nice draw here, chaining village silk merchant into my trading post. Very important to see that early to continue trashing. Six, I thought about old witch again here. If you've been following my renaissance videos, you know why I want the old witch. The old witch is a lot of draw, plus three cards, and it also curses my opponent, slows them down a bit. But primarily for the draw, that is your big draw on the board. You're not really trying to draw with Silk Merchant out here. You're trying to draw with Old Witch. Uh, but I decide, okay, no, let's not get the Old Witch just yet. Let's get the Captain, just try to stabilize a bit. If I have some Duration cards in play, you know, it might help to smooth out the draws of the deck. So let's get the, those Captains first. Then I could think about the Old Witch situation. Right, so here... Uh, my opponent tells me that they are actually having trouble with the Faithful Hound and the Treading Post. They keep colliding, which it seemed like it happened at least once on that turn 3, right? They did get a nice boon to bail them out if they did collide. But here, I think my opponent has had enough of the Faithful Hounds and chooses to trash one of them with the Treading Post. And... So they do trash, and I have an interesting decision to make on my next turn here. I will draw all the way up to the end of the deck with the port into Silk Merchant. With four, this is a couple of ports, I think. No, a Silk Merchant for my opponent, and we split the Labyrinth points with that as well. So the ports also help to get the Labyrinth points, which is okay. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's fine. And we ended up splitting them here. The Trading Post would have also helped with the Labyrinth, so it's not crucial that you go hammer in ports for labyrinth points here now the decision here i wasn't sure of what to do in the end i decided to uh, play my captain as a salvager clipper copper and buy an old witch here options other options are to play the captain as a silk merchant i do have two villagers so if i just see any actions i can play them if i want and i have another captain i have Another port, another silk merchant, the trading post would be a nice draw. So I could have been a bit ambitious, and it's not a bad shuffle to trigger anyway. Um, maybe silk merchant on the captain here is the way to go, but I ended up choosing the salvager option instead. I don't know if that's right. This uh, this turn, I was most in doubt for uh, for the whole game. I had the most doubt for this turn. But I decided to get the Old Witch in the Shuffle, which is why I didn't want to trigger the Shuffle. I decided to get the Old Witch in the Shuffle and start putting curses in my opponent's deck. That's not really why I wanted the Old Witch. I need draw. I want draw because I want to start triggering these Leprechauns and salvaging the gold of the Leprechauns, turning in wishes as soon as I get them, doing, you know, real exotic things with the deck here. So I put the old witch in the deck and reshuffle, and I also plan to use my captain in play as a silk merchant, which looks like, ta-da, wharf, an excellent card. I learned that from the last round. Anyways, eight and two buys for my opponent, potentially nine and two buys. They have a lot of options here, seriously. Um, but they have to take into consideration the state of my deck, the state of their deck, what do they want to do. In the end, they go for a captain and a hound, right? Uh, other options there, obviously, Old Witch Port, Old Witch Blessed Village, uh, Silk Merchant Old Witch. The Treasury, I don't think you want the Treasury. The Treasury doesn't do anything, right? You have lots of money from the Trading Post already. There's no real reason to pick up a tra Treasury here. Seaway is an option. Your only plus buy on this board is from the Silk Merchant. So you might be interested in a Seaway. I wasn't interested in it because we had the Silk Merchants and... I was okay for now with um, with that. I didn't really need to have 10 buys in the middle of the game here. The 2 or 3 buys from the Silk Merchant was sufficient for the remainder of the game. 
Oh, not the remainder of the game, for the, the middle of the game, I felt. So, um, like I said, my opponent eventually decides to get the captain and the a faithful hound after a lot of deliberation, right? A lot of deliberation. And here, I am going to call this captain as a silk merchant. And with a decent draw here, if I draw well, I feel like I could trigger a leprechaun this turn. So port old witch, and this is why I want the old witch, plus three cards, and it helps me to line up my leprechaun. I don't care about the curse. It buys me some time, fine. But I want the draw out, and the old witch is the best draw card on the board. So here, I do have the option for the leprechaun, and I am going to take it. I'm going to do a trading post first as card number six. Captain as leprechaun. Capricorn. Sure. As card number seven. And... While it is a leprechaun on this turn, next turn is going to be a wharf effectively. So that's well worth six coins there. I don't quite have the villagers to go looking for that wish. But that's fine. That is totally fine. And I don't even need the money from the gold to try to... to and I don't want to burn my villager here, right? Like I, I said while I was recording this, things can go wrong. I don't have to draw my ports up front. So I want to keep at least one villager in reserve just to offset any foolishness the deck wants to throw at me. So kept that villager there, kept my 9 or 10 and 3 buys, ample buys to do what I want. And I decide to go for another old witch and another pair of ports. Not the blessed village, again the ports make it way easier to trigger your leprechaun and the old witch is there because i need draw i didn't quite draw the deck there right the curse like i said is not important it buys some amount of time but my opponent has a decent deck with trashing plus the old witch itself can trash her own curses so that's totally fine not the greatest of turns here for my opponent they play their captain as a silk merchant and they use their last villager to play a trading post so seven up to eight and two buys and i think they go for what here as them i would have picked up definitely a silk merchant because you would like to have that safety blanket villager and one i think is enough I mean, if your deck can't function after playing like an old witch or a silk merchant uh, lead then you have problems <laughs> right and you have problems so Another long thought for my opponent here. Does push the coffer, go f goes for a captain and another faithful hound. I really didn't understand all of these faithful hounds. I don't know if they have all the um, actions to be able to play all of them. I wasn't tracking that uh, closely. But uh, the wharf here from the captain does draw me into an old witch. So this looks like it's going to be a good turn. And it turns out to be an excellent turn. I am able to trigger my leprechaun here. And I use the captain, of course, as a leprechaun. Because I don't have an actual copy of the card in the deck. And not only am I able to trigger the leprechaun this turn, but I am able to turn in two wishes. You'll see shortly here. So I'm at six cards. The captain has to come down now as a leprechaun for me to gain the wish. Otherwise... It won't get me a wish, it'll get me a hex instead. I do decide to draw on here with the Silk Merchant. It does mean I will use my last villager, but I had plans to pick up another Silk Merchant on this turn here. Just to have that stock replenish the blanket, the safety blanket villagers. So I was going to wish for a Blessed Village here, but I thought Captain is just way better than Blessed Village. Why don't I get a Captain instead? So I do get the captain and play it as a village. I uh, find the last old witch. And that will draw me into the other wish. Which I turn in for a captain. So this is what I wanted the deck to do. And it is at the point now where it is doing this. This captain will be a salvager this time. I'm going to start cutting down gold from the deck. And getting big, big money from it. And seeing 20 and 5 buys from me here. My opponent decides to resign the game. So that is game one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.